it was none of our choice to be born into a family that didn't know how to express love for each other as individuals. People who are still carrying the burden of shame, it is so heavy. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I am so thankful y'all are here. I pray you can find home here. And if so, welcome. So my earrings are causing like a little reflection, little party over here as y'all can see. They're very beautiful, very, very gorgeous. But yeah, they're causing all that commotion on that, on the side, so. But in this video, I wanna talk to y'all about the shame that comes along with not only trauma, but how shame is further perpetuated and ingrained in you when you run into a narcissist after childhood trauma. So first things first, when it comes to childhood trauma, there are certain parts of you that weren't poured into. There are certain parts of you that weren't validated and that were kind of left up to you to try to feel better about. Whether you tried to fill that void with, you know, unhealthy things, or if you just became really self-conscious, really insecure, you know, a person who may have been really shy and closed off because you had these voids which were natural and meant to be filled by your parents that weren't filled with healthy love or you were shamed for being who you are. You were shamed for feeling your emotions or having needs or whatever it was for you. So when you already have these voids within you, you don't really feel like a full person. Again, you may have certain insecurities. Um, you may not assert yourself in the ways that you would have been able to with healthy pan, par, uh, healthy parenting. And so what happens is when you run into a narcissistic individual, narcissists can do what they do because they're playing on the wounds that you already have. No one can shame you for something that you already accept, love, and validate in yourself. So when a narcissist starts to see the voids that were created in you through your trauma, they'll slowly start to nitpick and play on the things that they know are tough for you. So say for example, you have a wound from your childhood where you were never believed, you were never understood, you were never validated for having your own sense of self, your own agency over your perspective and your reality. When a narcissist typically unconsciously feels that energy from you or they can kind of sense where you lack, they end up playing on that part of you. So they may start to nitpick at, at your character. They may start to create lies about you that you know aren't true just to start to get into your psyche. Since it's on my mind, I do wanna say that there should be no relationship in your life where you love a person unconditionally other than your children. And even if your children are really hurting you to a point where it's like, I can't hold on anymore, even that relationship, you can't hold on to people or things that are genuinely hurting you. And I know for a lot of us, we have that trauma of wanting to be loyal, wanting to show 100% unconditional, unshakable loyalty to people. And we end up hurting ourselves in the process because we trust people very fast or we give people all of us because we feel like the version of ourselves with boundaries, with saying no, is unlovable. You know, we, we feel like we can't be loved through our standards, through us truly loving and valuing ourselves. So make sure you're not loving anybody unconditionally, again, if they're not your children. But back to what I was saying. So yeah, narcissists know how to play on what you already have been through, the traumas that you already have, and understand that their goal is to have the most control, the most reign over you and your life. So they'll do anything they really have to do in order to live a life that looks good, to live a life that feels good to them, even if that means taking away from 
their partner, taken away from somebody that's committed themselves to them. Getting deeper into the shame points that come from our childhood, it doesn't feel good to a child to know that the person who's meant to love you can't fully love and connect to you. It's, it's embarrassing. It's a sense of, I'm not good enough to be loved. And we carry that feeling around everywhere we go. So a lot of times it's not that we aren't confident. It's not that we don't love ourselves even, but there's a very embarrassing and humiliating energy that comes with knowing you're not being treated how you deserve as a human being to be treated. And that embarrassment of being mistreated is also what plays into the continuation of abusive narcissistic relationships because a lot of times the target won't speak up for what they're going through out of feeling embarrassed or ashamed about their situation. And again, most childhood trauma is passed down from generation to generation. Our parents didn't just wake up and say, I'm gonna abuse my children and make them feel worthless they got that same treatment. So however you were treated, understand that you're now experiencing the feelings and the emotions that your parents feel. So if they were too scared to really assert themselves in life and go after their, their dreams, more than likely you feel very limited in the things that you can achieve. If they feel a lot of shame, maybe around their personality or things they like, whatever it was that your parents felt, we get those feelings from them. So when you go through childhood trauma alone, there's a great sense of there's something defective with me and it's only a matter of time before everybody sees that I was abused, I was hurt really badly and I don't know if it's my fault. It's a lot of confusion in that wound, second guessing yourself of not feeling valuable. When you have this wound, narcissists can come in and again, exploit that wound in order to get what they want out of you, in order to, you know, suck you dry from your identity, from all the good things that you're getting in your life they don't truly value you as a person because they can't. They don't value themselves as a person. They don't have a true foundation of self-love for themselves. So they believe everybody else doesn't deserve to love themselves. They believe everybody else doesn't deserve, you know, true, genuine, good treatment. So I learned after getting out of a traumatic relationship that, that this person was just playing on wounds I already had and I was able to suppress them for a long time. I had the wounds of not feeling enough. I had the wounds of second guessing myself and feeling embarrassed for my own personality or for the things that I really dream about and wanna to work towards. I already had those wounds and he was able to play on that and make me feel like he held the validation that I needed to be worthy or not to be validated in my dreams and goals and who I am as a woman or not. So being aware of where your wounds are, what energy is behind all of your wounds? Like, what don't you feel good, good about about yourself? I think it's really good to be aware of how certain relationships have played a part in your life so far so that you can really understand and dissect those those different insecurities those different wounds i literally just had this realization um while i was in chipotle standing in line and in my last video i'll let y'all know that i do deal with social anxiety and today well i do it all the time now but i just started asking my inner child like why do you feel anxious right now why do you feel like you can't just be, you know? And sometimes I just feel like everybody's like looking at me or paying like close attention to me, like waiting for me to do something weird or waiting to be like, oh, like, oh, look at her, like waiting to embarrass me. And I realized that I've always had this wound of not being able to trust that people really had their the best intentions for me. And all my last relationship did was bring that to the surface and now boom, social anxiety. This is one of the best spaces I've been in because since my wounds are so visible to me now, I can come online and tell y'all, hey, 
I know somebody else is feeling this, experiencing this. This is how I'm working through it. So I'm slowly starting to lose the shameful feeling around my childhood wounds. I'm losing the shame around not being perfect or feeling like I'm defective. I'm not defective, never will be, never was. And sadly, it was none of our choice to be born into a family that didn't know how to express love for each other as individuals with individual goals, individual mindsets and personalities. It wasn't our fault that we could not be accepted for who we are authentically. You know, it wasn't our, our parents' fault. It wasn't our great grandparents' fault. There's really no one to blame because you it's no way to pinpoint exactly where the insecurities start, you know? And I'm getting a little bit emotional. I'm not gonna cry, but I am a little emotional because as I start to understand that the shame doesn't belong to me, it doesn't belong to you, it makes me hurt for the people that have came behind me and have felt like, they couldn't fully be themselves or you know the people who are still carrying the burden of shame it is so heavy it causes you to question every little thing you do every little thing you say and again sadly for a lot of us if you carry that wound more than likely you attract people who will continue to expound on that wound who will continue to try to make you feel bad for being who you are naturally you know but none of that is your fault. You don't deserve to feel like there's something wrong with you. You don't deserve to be put down for who you are naturally at your core because who you are, once you do start to let go of that shame and you do start to present yourself, you'll see that the lie that you're feeding into that something is wrong with me, something is defective, it's literally a lie. It's a belief that we had to take on because that was modeled for us or that was literally spoken to us so uh so yeah i don't know exactly where this video led to i hope it's valuable i hope it connects with somebody um i was all over the place so if you made it to the end of this video i am so thankful and i will see y'all in the next one bye